Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So I've been vegan for quite a while now, like well over 10 years. And over this time, I have developed some tricks, some tips, some methods, some hacks, some ways of doing things that have helped me out along the way. And I wanna share these with you guys. So we're heading to the grocery store right now. I figured this would be a great place to start. So let's get in there. So you head into the grocery store, you head towards the produce aisle because you know that's where all the healthy food's at and you go to grab some greens and you're picking out some amazing fresh cilantro, some parsley and you know as soon as you get home you're gonna put this stuff in the fridge and it's probably gonna wilt. <laughs> so what the heck do you do with all these greens to keep them nice and fresh? Well, let me show you guys what I do with them. So what I do is I just throw the herbs right into the sink, give them a good wash, dry them off a bit to shake off all the excess water, cut off the ends of it, and then I just put it into a glass of water like this, or a little jar of water, and just like, you know, flowers or whatever, it'll soak up all that water, it'll stay nice and healthy. So even when they are a little bit wilted like the parsley is here. This will actually like perk right up. It only takes a few hours. Let's see if I can put some footage over top so you guys can see how it comes back to life. I like to put them on my windowsill just because it like looks nice and green and they stay nice and happy up there. So you can also do it with green onions. So here's some green onions that we've been growing uh, on the counter for a little while. And it's really cool to do with green, on green onions because they keep growing back. So, so what I'll do is I'll just like take some scissors and I'll just like cut it off, put it on top of a salad or stir fry or whatever. And it just like can continues to grow. So this is kind of cool. I'll show you guys the roots of the ones that's been sitting in there for maybe about a week now and then the roots of the brand new green onions that we just got today. So they'll both be going in some water so that they continue to grow. It's like printing your own money basically. <laughs> oh yeah, but you do want to make sure that you change the water from time to time. Like if you look at it, the water's looking gross, just, you know, rinse it out, just get some new water in there because it will help them last even longer. Oh yeah, and that method will also work for celery as well. Uh, even if you have like kale, like cuttings from your garden outside, pop those in water, keep them nice and fresh. Uh, or even some lettuce like this. This one's actually kind of cool because it still has the roots attached. So that's definitely gonna be going into some water. All right, so that was just the first tip out of 10. And I'm sure you guys know some of these. I mean, they're not gonna be like crazy groundbreaking discoveries or anything like that, but I'm sure some of them are gonna help you out and I'm sure you're gonna know some of them as well. So if you know them, sorry, maybe put it in the comments down below. Be like, hey, I do that as well. Or if you guys have any that you think might help some of us, share them down below so that we can all learn. Anyways, let's move on to tip number two. Picking avocados. Man, there is like nothing more upsetting than when you think you've got like the perfect avocado and you open it up and it's all brown and stringy and everything inside. Ah, oh, absolutely hate that. So what I have found over the years is that if you can find avocados that still have the little button on the top, they are more likely to be nice and green and everything inside and not have those nasty brown strands. So this isn't like a 100% thing, but I have noticed definitely seems to correlate in my experience. So if you can, look for the ones with a little button on top and if you can get them when they are still like pretty green and not that ripe and then let them ripen on your shelf, that is gonna lead to uh, a lot less bruising because that way, you know, everyone hasn't like put their thumb into it, figured out if the avocado is fresh or not. And if you're like me and you buy these big bags of avocados, what often happens is they all ripen at the same time. And if you don't wanna eat like guacamole for your meals for like two days straight, you need to figure out a way to get these to ripen at different times. So what I like to do is to put one or two in the fridge right away, because that slows the ripening process. And then as they start to get ripe, if I don't have time to eat them, then uh, I just kind of find the softer ones and put those in the fridge. So that'll slow the ripening process. But if you just have too many avocados that are all too ripe, what you can actually do is just like scoop out the inside of it and you can freeze it. You can freeze it in a little freezer bag or you can freeze it in some Ziploc containers and you can use that for putting in like different sauces or soups or whatever you want with it. Oh yeah, and speaking of putting stuff in the fridge to slow the ripening process, if you guys have like a bunch of ripe bananas, like I do right here, and you don't think you're gonna eat them on time, well, first of all, you should like up your banana game because there's only four bananas here like you can eat these but you can also put them in the fridge and that'll slow the ripening process however you should know that something funny can happen to them so we put these ones in the fridge a few days ago and you can see they just get kind of dark like the skin isn't 
that bright yellow or anything anymore, but they're still super good on the inside to eat. Just amazing and sweet and delicious, just a little cold. So I thought I'd warn you guys about that before you go and put them in there and be like, oh my god, my bananas are ruined. No, it's just the outside. And then again, if there's just too many ripe bananas, and the fridge is full or you don't want to keep them in there, you can always just like peel them and freeze them as well. And they're so great for smoothies, making banana and ice cream, all sorts of different stuff. So bananas, they always make me think of peanut butter, which brings me to my next point. And that is when you buy nut butters, especially peanut butter, and this happens to tahini a lot, you get this like oily layer on the top of it. And what I used to do is I used to like pour it out because I was like, I don't know, I don't want all that extra fat. But now I realize that I just like love like super creamy peanut butter more than I care about any fat that's in there. So I leave it in there, but you guys will know it's kind of hard to mix up because it's so close to the top. When you try mixing it, it's just gonna like, you know, splash around and slosh all down the side. So what I like to do is simply turn it upside down and then you just put it in the cupboard for a few days. And then after a few days, you'll notice that the oil has kind of like moved around. It's not all sitting on the top. And then really all you have to do is just give it a good shake for 30 seconds or so, and it'll all be mixed up. And there we go. Beautifully mixed peanut butter. All right, man, all this peanut butter and banana talk has got me thinking of one of my favorite breakfasts ever, peanut butter banana on toast. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's been one of my favorites since I was a little kid. And another one of my favorites brings me to tip number five is scrambled tofu. And something that you can add to it to make it taste a little bit more eggy, if you would like, is this little seasoning right here. And it's called Kala Namak. It's also known as black salt, although it's definitely not black. So I'll just add a small spoonful of this when I'm making like tofu scramble or tofu egg salad is another favorite of mine that I've been making lately. You guys have probably seen me make it. Uh, but yeah, you can use it in a bunch of different things. I mean, you can put it in soups and sauces and stuff as well if you want, but my favorite is definitely with the tofu scramble, tofu egg salad. All right, moving on. All right, so number six, I need the blender for. So just a sec. So for number six, I'm gonna show you how to make this really quick cheesy nut and seed crumble. So this will not only help you to increase your intake of nuts and seeds, which you know are super healthy, but it'll also give you something delicious to put on top of your salads and your pastas, your stir fries. So yeah, let me show you how to make this super fast. And you don't have to measure anything. It's like, couldn't be easier. Brazil nuts, almonds, Sunflower seeds, cashews, flax seed. It's a great way to bump up your omega threes. And then I just add about the same amount of nutritional yeast as there are nuts and seeds, just kind of like by volume. Oh, wow, that's way more. And then you just want to make it taste good. So I'm just going to add some seasoning here a bit of onion powder, some garlic powder. In this one, I'm just gonna add some smoked paprika. It's not one I usually add, but I have before, and it's really nice. Just gives it a little smoky flavor. And then just some salt and pepper. Or pepper and salt in this case. And then this would be totally good to blend up just as is, but one thing that I like to add is just a little bit of apple cider vinegar. So this gives it a little bit of moisture so that it kind of like sticks together and gets a little bit like clumpy. So it does like crumble and also gives it a little bit of sourness, kind of like cheese. So you can play around with it. You might like it in there, you might not. And it can be a little bit finicky. You'll probably have to mix it up a few times by hand as well. Cause it kind of like sticks to the side, depending on your blender, I guess. So then you just want to put it into a container that you can put in the fridge and it should keep for, I don't know, a week, two weeks. I mean, there's not too much in here to go bad. Mmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, <laughs> so good. I'm telling you guys, on top of like pasta with some pasta sauce, it is unreal. So look how much we just made. I mean, you know, it was cheap. It was easy. It's going to last a while in the fridge. It'll help you eat more nuts and seeds. So yeah, everyone's winning here. Oh yeah, and just before we move on to the next tip, I guess this will be like a little sub tip as well, 6.5. Uh, you guys might have seen me using the mushroom bag here for the nutritional yeast. So we often like to bring our own reusable bags to the store to get bulk items, but sometimes we forget, we're not perfect. Uh, so rather than using like the plastic ones that they have there, if you are so inclined to rather use the paper ones, 
grab the ones from the little mushroom section and you can just uh, you know fill it up with all the bulk goods you want. And you can even reuse these bags. You could reuse the plastic ones of course, but I know we're all trying to use less plastic these days. So yeah, just a little tidbit of info for you guys. Oh yeah, but it's just reminded me, you can't see how much you're putting in these bags. So uh, just pay attention to how much is going in there. Cause like I filled this thing up with nutritional yeast and it was like over 20 bucks. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, so number seven comes from the freezer. So don't shy away from having frozen veggies or fruits. So I know a lot of people, they think that frozen food is so inferior to fresh food and they often shy away from it. I was even like this when I first went vegan. I was like, you know, fresh is best and I only want the best for myself or whatever. Uh, but it really limited me, right? Like all throughout winter, I wasn't able to have any berries or anything like that because if they were imported, they were so expensive and usually not very good either. Um, but you know, now have frozen berries all year round. These are even Canadian blueberries, look at that. A lot of people worry that they're not gonna be like as nutritious or whatever, but when they pick vegetables that they know are gonna be frozen. They actually pick them at the very peak of their ripeness. And this is because they know that they're gonna be flash frozen. They don't have to worry about uh, over ripening and transport or anything like that. And often when you buy fresh food, they pick it early so that it's more stable to be transported. And then they, they will often speed up the ripening process with like ethylene gas and other things, which I mean, is fine. Fresh food is like totally good. I'm not saying we shouldn't be eating those, but I'm just defending frozen food for once because I don't think enough people do. So frozen fruit, veggies, don't shy away from them. They're still just as good. They need to be eaten as well. <laughs> uh, and just the other day, like I made the most amazing meal and it was so quick. We had some leftover wild rice. Just threw that into the saute pan with some of the frozen veggies here. And within like 10 minutes, I had like an amazing meal. There's a bunch of reasons why frozen veggies are good. I mean, they don't spoil, so you're not going to be throwing any of them away. I mean, unless you let them get like totally freezer burned. Uh, and they're also often like cheaper because it's hard to keep stuff fresh in season. And then if it has to come from another side of the world all that transportation costs a lot of money so yeah frozen food always a decent option it's there for you number eight You need to grind your flax seeds if you want to absorb them. So we know we should be eating our omega-3s and flaxseed is the king of omega-3s when it comes to like the plant world, especially nuts and seeds. But you have to grind them. You have to at least crack the outer shell in order for your body to absorb the healthy fats that are inside. And the same actually goes for chia seeds. You're going to want to grind these too. So there's definitely some evidence that shows that grinding them is going to increase your omega-3 status a lot more more than if you don't grind them at all. However, if you like soak them overnight and you chew them up really well, you're probably gonna be okay. But if you have the chance to grind them and you wanna maximize the omega-3s you get out of it, you definitely want to grind them. All right, so number nine is mix your grains. So this is a favorite trio of mine. Uh, absolutely love the taste and texture and everything of white rice. However, you know, I like to bump up the protein content and the nutrition of it a little bit. So I also like to add some red lentils to it and also some quinoa. So you'll obviously want to choose grains that all cook at about the same amount of time. Like if one takes 20 minutes, one takes 25 or whatever, it's going to be totally fine, but they should kind of be close to the same amount of cooking time. So by combining and mixing up your grains like this, it's going to do a few things for you. So uh, it'll increase the variety. And we know if you guys watched my last full day of eating video, we'll know the importance of eating a wide variety of plant foods. Uh, secondly, it's going to bump up the amino acid profile. Certain plant foods are little lower in certain amino acids while others are higher and these often complement each other when they're combined and it's just fun different tastes good so anyways yeah I just thought this is interesting to share with you guys because for so long I didn't think about it and it's like my favorite way to cook all these things now so if you do make this mix right here with the white rice and the quinoa and the red lentils you do want to rinse it really well first that'll help get some of the saponins off the outside of the quinoa which can make it a little bit bitter sometimes a little hard to digest so yeah, just give it a good rinse first before you cook. All right, and number 10, this one is to kind of help a little bit with label reading. So of course, you wanna make sure that you read the labels well to make sure things are 100% vegan. However, a quick way that I have found to just kind of like sort through the junk if I've never seen the product before and I just wanna have a quick look and see if it contains milk or eggs is to look at the very bottom of the ingredients list and see where it says contains. 
and they always have to put the most common allergens in there and milk and eggs are definitely two of the most common allergens so they always list them in there they don't put uh, if there's like chicken stock or anything like that or if there's meat or whatever in there I mean you should be able to figure that out by the label but you know how they like to sneak milk or milk powder into just about everything so this is a really quick way just to be able to see that so like these salt and vinegar chips for instance like you wouldn't think that there's milk in salt and vinegar chips so just flip them over really quickly and you can see right there contains milk right in bold I mean of course you could look to see if it has little vegan certification on there as well that's always a good sign but you know just in case it doesn't have that and you just want to have a quick look and see it's a really quick easy way to tell and then just another quick point to add to this about label reading uh, I know a lot of people when they first go vegan or plant-based and they start looking at the labels they get a little freaked out when they see it may contain milk eggs fish whatever and uh, a lot of people think that means that you know it just just might be in there they don't really know well that's put on there for allergies and it just means that it's been made in a facility that has those other things in there or it's shared uh, an assembly line with products that might have milk eggs cheese whatever in there I mean of course they're gonna clean it between this but for allergies they have to tell you yeah I just wanted to share that with you as well because I know I get lots of comments from people being like Derek I love this product but it says it may contain this in it like can I still eat it if I'm vegan and yeah you can okay so that's it for this video that was 10 vegan food hacks that have helped me along my way and I hope they help you guys as well I'm sure that you guys can add some more to the comment section down below so leave some tips so that we can all learn we can all grow and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it and it was kind of interesting let me know and I can do 10 more tips maybe like 10 money-saving tips for vegans or like 10 ways to boost the, nu boost the nutrition of your food or something like that I don't know if you guys have ideas put them in the comments down below I'm always open to them thank you guys for watching subscribe so you can see more I'll see you soon with another video bye